What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am here with a massive Anthem video bringing you loads of new details which are making for a great great game indeed. But before we go any further guys, if you guys would like to support the video and the channel, hitting that like button truly helps out and I do appreciate that support. And if Anthem is the game you are interested in, be sure to subscribe. I will have all your Anthem needs covered right here on this channel. Okay, so at EA Play, we got another glimpse of Anthem. And although what we did see indeed looked great, they missed out on so much we wanted to know about the game. Yeah, we learned a little about what we didn't already know, but considering we have waited almost a year, or actually I think it is a year, for more gameplay and information, we only got a bit of it. Many were left underwhelmed due to basically not really learning anything new about the game. Today we will learn many, many new things about the game, including story plots, progression, loot, customization, co-op, PvP, raids or dungeons, and many other in-game features I'm sure you'll be interested in knowing about. Now this information comes from Mark Derra, the executive producer of Anthem. He has done a great job in answering questions about the game, and that's where all this info comes from. So let's go people! Now if you are watching this none the wiser on what Anthem is, well here is a quick briefing into the world of Anthem. Anthem is an upcoming online multiplayer action RPG game being developed by Bioware and published by Electronic Arts. The game will be released worldwide on February 22nd, 2019. Anthem combines third-person shooter and action role-playing game elements in a contagious open world, shared with up to four other players in which they take the role of a freelancer done in fully customizable exosuits called javelins. You pilot these javelins, suits of powered armor that let you fly and swim, javelins also let you survive in the hostile world of Anthem, a world left unfinished by the shapers. The game features both single player and cooperative multiplayer elements in a shared world that can have up to 4 squad members per team. Teams can fight savage beasts and ruthless marauders while exploring lost ruins and experiencing massive world altering terrain occurrences. Your primary enemy in the story will be the Dominion, a human nation bent on subjugating the other people. The Dominion believes that they can control the tools of the Shapers and bend them to their own purposes. The Dominion are an ancient enemy with a secret in their past and that's basically a quick briefing of what I can think of but I'm guessing you already knew all of that so let's get into the details you may not have heard yet and let's start with progressing and how you can play the game where you can play the game in either solo or a party of four matchmaking will be a thing too the structure of the game is encapsulated in the concept of our world, my story. When you are out on a mission, you are focused on that the world is shared across everyone and changes you share, cataclysmic storms and time of day with people you aren't playing with. This offers a kind of storytelling that hasn't existed in Bioware games before. When you are done on a mission, you can return to a base like Fort Tarsis. Here you will talk to characters, customize your suit and see the results of your actions. Your base is a single player experience, removing social pressure from those who want to spend time with the characters of Fort Tarsis. If you decide to play the game solo, solo it is, you won't get help from AI controlled allies and in-game NPCs. Although you will come across them in-game, they will speak to you throughout missions, they won't be on the mission with you. Your character will have voiced dialogue, that's good to know. There will be in-game relationships accordingly, as you'd expect with storytelling, bonds build, etc etc, but no romances on the cards at the moment. Missions throughout the game are set with one outcome, but the conversations we have and interactions we have within our hub will definitely affect their lives. As we know you can play the game solo or in a team. In a team means you can travel the diverse world together and help one another out on said missions. If you're at the same place on a said mission, you will both get full credit for that mission. If you do a mission you've already done to help out, you will get special rewards, so that's awesome. Dungeons, raids or what's now known as strongholds will require a team of four and cannot be done solo. These strongholds, like many other features, are not required to complete the story. So us as freelancers starting out into the world of Anthem, you actually start the campaign as a ranger. The other javelins are unlocked throughout the story, the Colossus, the Storm and the Interceptor. It's important to note, all are in the game at release. You just gotta do your job in unlocking them before you can use them. Your freelancer can change suits so there is no need for multiple profiles. One character, one freelancer, multiple javelin suits. 
important not your whole team can use the same javelin suit if they choose to if you are doing a mission together you can change suits within your forward base or at forward tosses that is up to you now the way leveling works up is as follows you level up your freelancer so changing suit after using a specific single javelin for multiple levels doesn't change anything your freelancer's level unlocks perks across all javelins so leveling up your freelancer guys affects all javelins you own so it won't be a single javelin suit progression system all javelin suits are level with your freelancer the javelin suits as we know all offer different unique perks so it makes sense that some weapons can only be used by some javelin suits the javelin suits as we know can fly and do allow you to breathe for a certain extent underwater but flying causes your jets to overheat you will have to land to cool them down so be careful where you're landing people or you can find other ways in cooling them down underwater you will have an oxygen meter which if it runs out guys yes you become spongebob's food there will be a revive feature though not sure about underwater but there is one here the javelin suits do have melee attacks by the way but at launch there is no pure melee build javelin suits and there most probably won't be at launch now because you will spend a lot of the time beyond the walls, you will obviously take a lot of damage, clearly. So how does health work? Well it doesn't regen, you will have to pick up health. This could come in many forms, not confirmed yet. Javelin suits are upgradable via loot drops found within the world, so expect bigger jets, bigger air tanks, scarier weapons and so forth. Loot found within the mass open world can be crafted to change the way your javelin plays. So crafting has been confirmed, that's absolutely epic. You can also unlock cosmetic items to change the way you look. This includes armor packs and paint jobs. We can also change the playstyle of our javelin suits by changing up weapon loadouts. There is a separate personalization system which allows us to change our appearance. Also changing the appearance of said items like changing colors can be reverted if you want to. We will also be able to change the way our freelancers look, which is cool. Now progressing in a game is confirmed by new skills, weapons and enhancements. So there is that reason to play and level up. The higher level up you get, the better gear you unlock, simple as that. Loot in game as I've mentioned drops from multiple sources out in the world, enemies and so forth. And it's believed that there are at least 5 rarities of loot. Loot is also instanced per player. So it won't drop on the floor where others can steal it. You complete something, you get that loot. Simple. While on the subject of loot, what about loot boxes, microtransactions? How will they affect the game? Well, loot boxes are not in the game. You will be able to buy vanity items, but they offer you no benefit in game in terms of power. Also, the vanity items you can buy, you can also earn in game. Now, PvP, is it going to be a thing? Well, not yet, and I believe they don't currently have any plans for it in the works. This comes because of a number of reasons. It allows Bioware to go broader on gear and weapons without worrying about balance, as you can imagine. In a game as such, multiple javelins, gears unlocked at certain levels, the imbalance would be absolutely crazy. But there are many ways of solving this, so I'm optimistic we will eventually see PvP sometime after launch. So yes, you can play with your friends, but you just can't play against each other as of yet. Also, no couch co-op, so two people can't play split screen on the same console. You also need to be online to play due to dedicated servers. There will be no core plots locked behind DLC, so I guess this confirms DLC in the future won't have locked story as such, that's good news. More javelin suits will come after launch too, so 4 javelin suits at launch with the possibility of many more added post launch. Awesome! So how will the game run? Well, previously they stated it will be locked at 30 frames per second on console. They might actually prove themselves wrong, especially on new revisions. I'm pretty sure people will see 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X. Aim assist will also be a thing for controllers. At the moment, currently there will also be no cross-network play at launch. A first-person view will also be a thing too, absolutely amazing. And what about a demo or a beta of the game where millions can play and give their input? Well. They do plan on getting the game out to a wider audience before launch, but at the moment can't discuss what's planned. And lastly guys, why is it called Anthem? Well it's a long story they state, but the Anthem of creation is a major thing in the world, and people indeed it is. And on that note we have come to the end of the video. I honestly hope you've learned something new about the game today, if you haven't well you're as big an Anthem nerd as me. But yeah guys, I do truly appreciate your support. If you'd like to hit that thumbs up button, I would love you forever. Remember subscribe if you are new around here and enjoy and want more Anthem videos. And people, hopefully I will catch you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand, but you and I. Yeah.
getting right. 